Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and I'm going to do the May 16th just for today in a meditation. The title of the meditation for today, Our Higher Powers Will. God's will for us becomes our own true will for us. That's from the basic text, page 48. I would suggest you take that quotation, the page, and put it in the back of your book. Uh, the 12 steps are path to spiritual awakening. This awakening takes the form of a developing relationship with a loving higher power. Each succeeding step strengthens that relationship. As we continue to work the steps, the relationship grows, becoming ever more important in our lives. In the course of working the steps, we make a personal decision to allow a loving higher power to direct us. That guidance is always available. We need only the patience to seek it. Often, that guidance manifests itself in the inner wisdom we call our conscience. When we are open, excuse me, when we open our hearts wide enough to sense our higher power's guidance, we feel a calm serenity. This peace is the beacon that guides us through our troubled feelings, providing clear direction when our minds are busy and confused. When we seek and follow God's will in our lives, we find the contentment and joy that often elude us when we strike out on our own. Fear or doubt may plague us when we attempt to carry out our higher power's will, but we've learned to trust the moment of clarity. Our greatest happiness lies in following the will of our loving God. Just for today, I will seek to strengthen my relationship with my higher power. I know from experience that knowledge of my higher power's will provides a sense of clarity, direction, and peace. Moment of silence followed by the serenity prayer, please. Thank you. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Just for today, please and thank you. God's will for us becomes our own true will for us. How does that happen? That's a process, right? Because we know that nine times out of 10, even if we didn't believe in God or had an issue with the thought of having a God, we know that by the time we got to Narcotics Anonymous, we were saying a prayer. Most of us were saying a prayer. Please don't let me die. Allow me to get clean. Allow me to meet whatever stipulations I have on me to not go back to prison. Help me make my way back to the people that know and love me and care about me. My children, right? Basically my family, my mother, my father, my siblings, right? My best friends, my husband or my wife. We had some simple prayers and we call those what I would call foxhole prayers. We do know that even if we didn't have a belief in God, we had this prayer. We have had to have had it in order to even be here. Okay. So I want to tap into that energy, right? I want to take you back to that day, that prayer. Even if your understanding of a God was obscure, unclear in other words, okay? We want to go back to that because we're building upon that, right? Um, and working the steps in the course of working them. Look at this paragraph number two. In the course of working the steps, we make a personal decision to allow a loving higher power to direct us. Step three, turn my will and my life over to the care of God as I understand him right? We made a decision. Now, this is a, a bit more willful, right? This is more about my will saying, 
God, I need you. God's will for us becomes our own true will for us. So up until this point, up until the point of my surrender to Narcotics Anonymous and admitting that I had a problem and needed help, that my life, the unmanageability, we, we cross over that word so fast in the first step, but that unmanageability is usually what gets our attention. So I'm very grateful for the gift of desperation, right? The coming to believe that I could be restored to sanity. I almost act that out. It's, remember, it's past tense. We came to believe, right? So it's almost by the time I get to the second step, it's already happened. Now, you can dig deep into that and make it as complicated as you want, but you literally would never have gotten to the second step unless that had already happened. But here's where desperation and kind of just the natural progress of the steps is not enough at the third step. Because now I need to make a decision to do this. And the only way I benefit from the beauty that comes in having a surrender to a loving higher power is if I actually make the decision and do the work that supports the decision. So instead of getting up every day and doing the same old, same old, I take a moment of silence and some time. To, to commune, right? To meditate, pray and meditate with a God of my understanding. So I have some direction or at least I have a tone of peace as I proceed, proceed in the day. Special shout out to Dion. Thank you so much for your text this morning. Peace in the new day. Right? She's encouraging me. She's encouraging me 45 minutes ago, which means that that was almost 4 a.m. Not even 4 a.m., 3 a.m. And so I thank you for that because it reminded me, even though I'm struggling with the internet today, just getting it done, even if I have to go to Starbucks or even if I have to go outside of the home to sit in the presence of a Wi-Fi, it doesn't matter. You know, during a storm, this tornado, uh, one of the things that displaced me was the electricity, the power lines draped over my house into the yard and into our driveway. So we had very little space to actually walk safely in. And so they came out and they took care of that, but there was this one wire that stayed on the ground, crossed all the way across the street to a pole, and just laid there. Trees were on top of it. People were driving on top of it. I think I've even driven on top of it, right? And something just said to me, this is not normal because it's connected to the electric company's box on the side of my house. And I called for help a couple of times, but when I, I figured out to make it more urgent, and get them there. I had to let them know that there were trees on top of it. It's connected to a pole. Um, all of the things that you would do in case of an emergency. Well, they came and cut that wire down, rolled it up and put it next to my house. And so I do believe that that is why I don't have internet today. Okay? And so just that kind of reminder from her any time of the day you do it, it's fine. Mighty stream, have peace today. Isn't that beautiful? That we get to stay in the will of God, understand God's will for us and our own true will now becoming one with God's will for us. That is not going to happen overnight. That is going to happen with the working of the steps, the ability to have those spiritual principles inculcated into our energy, our spirits, right? Being able to express in confidence that we have goodwill now. Our true will is goodwill and it's God's will, 
right? Repeat that with me. Our true will is goodwill and God's will. That's a lot of positive energy and people like her reaching out to me at this hour. That's amazing because it helps me to stay focused, right? And that's all we're doing here is helping one another and understanding. It really doesn't matter how you come here. What matters is that you stay here and that you do the work of learning how to completely surrender your will to the will of God, to your higher power's will. Because I'm assuming if you're choosing a higher power and it's your choice and it's according to your understanding, why would it be necessary for you to have a negative energy about having one? If it's according to your understanding, nobody's forcing you to have uh, this conventional uh higher power, this conventional God of the United States of America or any other country. No one's forcing you to do that. So if I'm having a problem with establishing a God of my own understanding, maybe the word God is your issue. Religion definitely sounds like it is. But maybe the word God is your issue. Use higher power, use HP, use whatever you need to, to get past that hump. Not that you propagated it or created it. You got there by reason of lived experience, but you're in the here and now. You're grown. You get to have a God of your own understanding. I'm not interested in having to understand it. It's for you to do. And if not having that understanding, if you're stuck in a rut and you get to choose it, that would tell me that there's some personal work that you need to do about that topic. And the third step is the perfect place to do it. So just roll your sleeves up, be honest about where you're at, and move, move forward. Because all of the other steps I believe, are contingent upon you having an understanding of who or what your God is, your higher power is. You know, we got to take the kid gloves off because our lives are at stake. Our very lives are at stake. We can't afford to keep relapsing. I talked to one person last year, they overdosed like eight or nine times. And even though they think they're as sharp as they were when they were in their 20s, I can tell you that every other word was a stutter and they are not the same. Their brain, their bodies stopped breathing, flatlined eight or nine times just last year. Just last year, and guess what? They got over six months clean today. Our lives are at stake, literally. So I want the best for you. I hope that you'll do this work, that you will strengthen your relationship with your higher power because you can lean into your own experience and knowledge of your higher power's will that provides sense of clarity and direction and peace for you today. My name is Mighty Stream. I've enjoyed talking to you. Have a beautiful day on purpose.